it's a completely kind of open forum to see <clears throat> um, what I normally go through when I'm looking for optimizations and why. So kind of thinking like um, sharing with you how my brain works, I guess, in a true brain transfer. That's that's a that's enough to at least get maybe 20, 30 percent better, perhaps, hopefully 300 percent. But I did this with um, a few clients and where I put standard shopping in all just kind of one big item. So we're going to do a live optimization of any accounts that anybody would like to share. So that's kind of the purpose of this is, is kind of thinking um, in a John brain transfer. Normally on our Wednesday meetings, we bring up accounts that are, you know, like kind of at risk. Um, we don't have to bring up an at-risk account, maybe an account that's, you know, doing well. What else we could do be doing better? It's a completely kind of open forum to see <clears throat> um, what I normally go through when I'm looking for optimizations and why. So kind of thinking like um, sharing with you how my brain works, I guess, in a true brain transfer. Anybody at all? <laughs> yeah, <he's a> <laughs> like, I, is John talking? I can't hear anything. <laughs> my connection is bad, so I am yeah. having trouble. <laughs> all I heard was John saying is like something. Like, We're done today. All right, bye. <laughs> All right. I've got one for you. Let's have a look at Ampere. They've got a thousand performance max campaigns running. All right. So here's the first thing that I do when I'm about to evaluate a campaign. First, we always want to check that performance tracking. Just double checking because we want to start with like the most obvious, which is usually fine, but then go back to the, okay, now that all of our foundation is covered, um, then we, we go through everything else. So this is our primary serve PPC. Check what pages. See that we're tracking. Let's see. That's a 13999. We're tracking for come on. All right. So we're good there. Tracking seems to be working fine enough that we can look at. <laughs> Next, check the tag. Again, tags fall off all the time. I can't tell you how many times I looked and be like, oh, well, that's why that fell off. Ecom Prodigy looking good and it's sending back shop by US 6752. So now that's the most popular one in our product list. So let's just make sure that that is a product that's actually also running because you want to just check overall kind of, kind of structure. So here's the first thing we're looking at is item ID contains this Shopify here. This one's inactive. Uh, let's see. This is just pause right now. Is that right? I'll, I'll probably need some. Uh, how did you get here? All campaigns and then products, and this is the only one that's inactive? Nope. What I did is I looked at um, looked at the ad pre or sorry, the audience manager. And then inside of data sources, <clears throat> what this is going to tell me is who are, what people are looking at, what products on the site. And it's going to be for any channel. So what that means is people coming from Facebook, for example, that might be looking at, <clears throat> looking at a product that we should potentially be either also marketing or remarketing to them. This number here is there's 1,682 people essentially hits. Um, there's going to be some duplicates too, but there's 1,600 like kind of remarketing tags active for a product. And if you look at the last 30 days, you can see what's the most popular product. There's 524 people that need to be remarketed this product here. So I took that product there and went into the products here and then filtered by that same ID and noticed that we are, are inactive and since July. So let's okay. just check back last 30 so days. Oh, I've never been to this area where it's just like all campaigns and products. Is it showing you the products that are inactive in all of the campaigns in the account? Yep. Like and if even it's, if it's active in one small area, like, cause we have multiple shopping campaigns, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So some are inactive in some and some are active in others. Yep. So you'll see this one's ready to serve and is active in one campaign. Oh, I see. Interesting. Uh, this one's ready to serve is active in two campaigns. So that means that that one that's the most, that's the most visited on the website is not even one that we're promoting. Correct. Weird. I don't know why that, I don't know how people are even discovering it <laughs> since well, we're not promoting it. <clears throat> hey, remember how Google works. Google is going to be a kleptomaniac. 
it's going to try to steal, take credit for, or it's going to do everything it possibly can in order to get that conversion, regardless if it was mm-hmm. started by them or not, regardless of his brand or not, regardless of his remarketing or not. <laughs> so by leveraging what Google wants to do, sometimes we can kind of kick things into gear. So this is what I look at to say, are we marketing the right products just on, based on organic direct and social channels activity? So right now, the most popular product is one that we're not also remarketing, which could potentially stop learning. The campaigns that are marketing the products that are being marketed right now oh, are not marketing. You're saying we're not remarketing it either, like in dynamic or marketing, it's also inactive? Well, if it's inactive as a product, yeah. But okay, okay, that's weird. I didn't know we could, I could. So the dynamic or marketing campaign, I just assumed it was to all products. How do I well, make it if, to all products? If it's dynamic or marketing, like you'll have a, um, like if this if this product here is not is not active, for example, you, it may still be remarketing from dynamic remarketing. But one thing that we're going to do is sometimes potentially shoot ourselves in the foot a little bit when we're talking about attribution. So this product here, it would be really good to see. Okay, is this product getting clicks and getting sales? Um, dynamic marketing won't tell us that, and it won't tell us if it's if it's working well. So my opinion would be, if we had a and I don't want to say like performance max speed only campaign, but that would be one thing that um, I know that we've tested. I know we've tried that before, but one piece of the puzzle. Now, again, we're going to go through this for a while. I'm doing this step by step. So I'm. we'll jump ahead to, look, okay, now what do we do here? But this campaign or this, this product we know for sure is the most active product on the site and we're not doing anything with it. So I would like to potentially in, a, in in starting with that kind of catalog catalog all of the products that are being per, being purposely remarketed to on the site that are that are being driven by other sources that are looking to be very popular and compare that to what we're running so we're just what we're doing right now is just kind of getting a feel so don't jump ahead just to the end just yet we'll we'll kind of go through building a scenario what we're trying to do is identify the tone we're trying to identify um, the audiences. We're trying to identify low-hanging fruit. We're doing a whole bunch of stuff here. So this one being an inactive product, but also the most popular, that's the first kind of riff in, in my mind. My, um, and I think when this one does look like it's been marketed before. So we're going to look to now is look at all time and see, does this, did this ever run? Right now, we've only had 10 clicks. Okay, so that's going to be the first thing now that I want to look at. Is I'm just going to take some shorthand notes here. Um, sorry, John, yeah. sorry to interrupt you, but before we go further down the rabbit hole, can I just go back one step when you were looking at the econ prod ID mm-hmm. for the tag? Um, I know that, re- well, not recently, but a while ago, sometimes if item ID shows, is that acceptable or is it just black and white? If econ prod ID isn't showing, it's it's broken. We've got to fix it. We've got to make sure econ prod ID shows. No, uh, either... Either ID or Ecom Prod ID is dependent upon CMS. Sure. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, the first, the, the next thing I would probably look at is what other marketing is happening from a paid perspective. Do we know if they're running <laughs> Facebook? And I forgot. I'm sorry. Do we know if they're running Facebook ads? Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Um, I have a note somewhere. Let me look it up. Um. Because I went through all the accounts to see if they were running Facebook ads. So I know this. I just don't remember for this account. Mm-hmm. Um, so they they are not running Facebook ads. So this is actually um So I don't even know how people are finding this product. <laughs> could be organically. Or it could be people looking at this product after coming in from a different product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um And I I don't know why it's excluded either, but I do know that the client had like category, entire categories he didn't want us to promote. So I'm assuming it's one of those. Do you know why? Abhiji, if you remember, if you're here, um, let us know. Yeah. Yes. We even posted a few ad groups yesterday. You remember that? uh, I think this is the brand, the excluded brand. Oh, it's the brand that he wanted excluded. What brand is it? Yeah. Yes, it's a Velour or something, like Velour brand. Mm. Hmm. Um, and recently the client 
I asked the client why he wouldn't want to actually, and I have his answer and it was pretty vague. It was something like, oh, I wanted to exclude all the products that haven't sold since the beginning of time on my website, but he's in excluding entire brands. So it doesn't make any sense. So here's the first thing I would say is I, I understand his reasoning because a lot of times he would think, well, if all things are being equal, <laughs> We don't do any new marketing. We don't do any new audiences. We're not looking for <clears throat> any new campaign types where if we do nothing, <clears throat> let's only try to sell the same products. But then we have to say, well, we're we're doing much different than what you've done before. Every new marketing endeavor is different than the previous marketing endeavor. So the products that are have sold before may be different than what the products that will be sold. Right now, he's got 2,093 inactive products and 1,000 active products. The first thing I would say is he knows for sure that these would never sell, basing that off of because they haven't yet, because we haven't marketed them yet. So there's kind of a cart before the horse there <clears throat> by saying, well, I I would test those. I, I absolutely would. Um, what we're, what we're doing now doesn't seem to be working just yet. And a lot of the products, if we look at just the all, um, there's a lot of these are that are inactive. So this is a this would be hard um, to, to make sure that this is, you know, perfect. I would say this is going to be something we would want <clears throat> to at least test. <clears throat> we all know with a high degree of certainty that people don't buy what they click on not all the time so that's that's i think a constant that everyone knows here that would be for sure so what we can also say is well just because we're marketing that product does not mean that we're necessarily going to get people looking for the product that want to buy that product i could be looking for a dresser an oak dresser this is not a glitch I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you want to work with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google Ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com, that's sol com to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm rhythm so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. And see this and say, that's pretty cool. It's a little expensive. So maybe I'll look around and buy something else. Well, we're have, we're also saying with a high degree of, of certainty. Well, he is, I'm not saying us, but he's saying with a high degree of certainty that no, that won't happen either. So we have two thirds of our product not being marketed. And also knowing that two thirds of those products that did get a click, they are only interested in that product, which we also know is another fail point too. <clears throat> to combat that too, we also know that those products are in demand because everyone has a dresser, it's established. And it's also something that people may come in on and buy something else. We know that to be true. So there's now there's two points that were, were two degrees of separation so far. <clears throat> I'm not saying this is going to fix it, but this is what I would test next. Um, just because if he, if we look at it from here, um, we've had $23,000 in the account since June, June, 20, 2021 and 91 conversions. <clears throat> so that's a year and a half and 91 sales. That's, um, that's not a lot of data points when you're talking 3,000 SKUs. That's like a really good day for like 10 SKUs. So we've gotten to a point where I don't think that everything's been tested enough, at least not in Google, and at least not in the last year and a half. So that's a good good data point for me that I would say is, yes, it could be profitable, but then what is actually selling now? So looking at, I understand that he has a very select, select products that he wants to sell. The problem is, the market disagrees with him <laughs> and the market's always right. So <clears throat> we can kind of live and die by what we want to do, but the market ends up always winning. 
So let's look at a, a campaign here. Let's go to a different one. Um, what has the most amount of conversions? Now, the... I don't know if you know that you can control Z in this. It's pretty cool. Okay. So on the screen, this year, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 items that have sold. Only two out of those 12 bought the item they clicked on. The underline is the item that was sold. The rectangle is indicative of products that had a different item being sold because of that click. So you'll see one purchase on a 160424. What you didn't notice though too is when I originally looked at the conversion tracking, I looked at the total and found out was it the subtotal, was it subtotal plus tax, subtotal plus tax plus shipping, or is it the total? The price, uh, the item price is the price that they actually pay, which is why I know that if you have a 1604.24, my conversion value on that one sale is going to be 1604.24 or 1154.25. <clears throat> now, on the other times, when you see one purchase of a $409 item, unless they grossly overpaid for some reason, they paid $795 on that. That was definitely not that item. 59, one sale, 116. Could have been two. No, because that would come out to 118. So when you're looking here, what we know is, hey, the items that you've actually been selling are not items that got clicks. What if we opened up to the other two thirds of your product line? Could we find some more, at least just sales or a higher activity? Or maybe a, a product that's in more demand that simply brings the person to set the purchases. So this is a really good screenshot here, actually. Uh, I was going to drop this in the chat for you in case you ever wanted to share that with them. Um, but just send an email, be like, hey, just, you know, by the way, um, anything that's underlined is a product that's sold. Everything that's been highlighted here that's not an underline means that these are products that came from clicks from other products. So this is another another line that's in. I would say that this is enough to stop here. I can I can go further, but I would say the majority, majority of the meat and potatoes are, well, the items that are being clicked are not the items that are selling. Two thirds of our products are not being marketed. And we have econ prodigy showing that the most popular products are ones that we've chosen to not even market in the first place. That's that's a that's enough to at least get maybe 20, 30 percent better, perhaps, hopefully 300 percent, but some step closer and some time in some some use cases or some use cases. I I did this with um a few clients and where I put standard shopping in all just kind of one big item, for example, um, the one that we're we're marketing for. The client says, well, what should we break those out? I said, the only time you'd ever break it out is if you want to push ad spend towards that specific product or that group of products. Um, but we have all of his products in one big campaign. And he goes, yeah, that makes sense. So if you look at it, they're all, you know, you get random sales, people click on one and buy the other. The only time that we're going to break it out is if we're like, well, because it's the new year and you sell supplements and there's probably like fat burners, which is like night tread and, you know, cleanse and those things that are talking about like, you know, losing weights, not like gaining weight or not becoming stronger, but your weight loss products. I put those in a general campaign, maybe 10 weight loss products in a standard shopping campaign because you're, you, know, you dedicate ad spend to those themes, but that'd be the only time we break out. He goes, all right, let's keep it all together. And it's been working well. Um, so what I'm thinking is if the client would be open to, to it by saying, hey, I know we're marketing a select group of products, but those clicks are selling other products. So <clears throat> that's what I would say is a probably a good use case to say, you know, those multiple points here, would you be open for a test to market more products? And we'll just see what happens. What's good about this though, is I don't think it can really, you know, I don't think we can get much worse than that. Costume with your day, the Google News, and I'm so excited today. We're talking to Matthew Stafford, uh, owner and CEO of Build, Grow, Scale, which has been one of the, I'd say, top e-commerce education companies for quite some time, Matt. I feel like you've been it for at least as long as I've been in the game.